on, Hello. on, on. Hi, everybody. Hey. hey. Oh, every week is the same. I always forget. The you know, volume. 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 <laughs> volume is down. Yes, volume is down. I only want to do is see the video. There we are. And, and we, we are, are a go. Yes. See, for those of you that log in early, you're able to watch the pre-show. Yes. And <laughs> or outtakes. This week. <laughs> Us making fools of ourselves a little bit, or at least we. I don't know. Part of our true, charm. But, um, yeah. No. So should we start out with the good news? Yes. Drum roll. Here are here are the cookies. Woo! Woohoo! Yes. And the winner of the cookies, Jennifer, or as I know her, Jenny Murray. Wasn't me. <laughs> no. <laughs> Congratulations. So, congrats. congrats, Jenny. I will um, find a way to get the cookies. Cheers. Too. Cheers. <laughs> so, to you. if you would like a chance to win cookies for this month's entry, all you have to do is easy. You can write a question in one of the Wine Wednesdays this month, mm -hmm. or you can private message any of the three of us. With the real estate question. Yes, <laughs> real estate related, please. We can't help you with your love life. This is not that show. You don't want that help. So, <laughs> Maybe, though. Yes. <laughs> that might be a good idea. We can answer those questions, but it doesn't get you entered into yeah, the job. No. Correct. You so, don't get to win real estate yes. cookies. So, Enter your question, and then we will um, pick a winner, and then next month this time, we will pick May's winner. One month from now. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you may very well end up, end up with your own Plenty of Cookies. Um, or, and, and, in addition to, uh -oh. at that point, maybe we'll have our 43 Wines Signature oh. Wine oh. custom label bottle. We of, are. We're going to have our own... That's private not signature wine. Label. That's a different it's, one. It's not. But um, it will, yes, private label. <laughs> <laughs> Exclusive only to 43 homes. So, go ahead. So, with Carry that on. being said, We're shall on. we discuss mm -hmm. today's topic? Yes. You know, yes. How, you know what the easiest thing in the world to do is when I watch TV? What? HGTV tells me that distressed properties are the easiest way to make money. I love those shows on HGTV because they just are not um, very realistic. <laughs> <laughs> Reality TV. Right. To a T. Yeah, they say it's easy. They say it's wonderful. They say, oh, yeah, there's just a ton of them, so go buy them. Yeah. Because like you want one of those. Mm-hmm. So, me? Do you? Me? No. Do I want one? It depends. I don't think I want one. You may not want one. Do you want one? I have, but I don't now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have, a, I have a client, I have two clients actually that love them. I, I do as well. Yeah, I think there's going to be probably a specific buyer for that. Mm -hmm. We'll get into that in just a few minutes. So today's topic, if you haven't picked up yet, is distressed properties. And distressed properties go by a lot of different names. Like what? Bank owned, short sale. Foreclosure. HUD. Estate bacon, sale. Estate, estate sale. sale. There's a it, lot of them. It's anything basically that isn't your average everyday arm's length transaction. There's something unique in the circumstance that's causing the property to be sold potentially at a discounted value. Mm -hmm. I say potentially. potentially. <laughs> yes. Well, and one of the things we found in this market is that there aren't as many of them anymore, so they're not quite the deal that they used to be, right. quite honestly, for a plethora of reasons, mm -hmm. but mainly because... There's a glare. You're good. Oh. Oh. Um. Wah, wah, wah. Oh. oh, Wayne's doing a software update. I'll get that for update. you. You sit down and Is start that talking. Mine? That's yeah, yours. Yeah, you get hit later. Oh, later. See, this is a, this is a deep apple. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you need to go. Okay. And I'm back. Hi. Hi. So, yeah. We love this live thing. And I hope you guys all bear with us. It's part of the... Fun. It is. So, okay, so have you represented anyone in a distressed property purchase? I have. Um, we have dealt mainly with um, estates. Mm -hmm. um, estates are a unique creature in and of themselves. 
which we're not really going to cover today. We're not, but we can talk about later. Yes, we um, can mention it here, not really applying to the topic we're discussing today, but yes. But I, ha I have also worked with clients on um, bank-owned properties mm -hmm. um, and HUD properties. Yes, and I have too. I, I always find that I get a lot of people who are interested in them. Oh, Wayne's back. Hi, everyone. Hey, Welcome man. back. Um, so I find that's always a great, you know, when I'm talking to a client or a potentially new client, um, hey, yeah, why don't you add the foreclosed homes into my search? And I always like to have a conversation about those homes because I think that they're – the, the purchase is a little misrepresented on HGTV and other TV shows that um, have these as and and you know typically that's where people are learning that this might be mm -hmm. a route they want to go. Never say no to adding those in, but always want you to be educated on it. So why don't we start there? I, I yes. yeah, kinda... I think that's a good idea. So we're gonna start with the bank owned properties, the yeah. REOs. So yeah, I think that's what everybody thinks of when you hear like foreclosure, distress sale. I mean, distress sale is, I think, the generic term for all of these things. Probably an industry term. I think yeah. I think probably it's going to be a real estate agent or a contractor yes. or somebody involved in real estate that's going to yes. be using the term distress property. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should just call it a foreclosed yeah. home. So if you and, and that is, it can be foreclosed. There can be a lot of um, different scenarios. So the one you probably think of most when you think of these things is bank owned, right? I mean, that's. Yes. That's what everybody asks me for is, you know, can you give me a list or include bank owned mm -hmm. properties? So, so what does it mean for it to be bank owned? How does it, how does it get to that point? Um, it could get there in a couple ways. Um, someone could have done a deed in lieu of foreclosure. I mean, first of all, they're going to be behind in their tax, they're behind in their uh, mortgage payments. So yes. they're facing foreclosure in one way. Yes. They could turn over the deed or it could go through a sheriff's sale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that so basically someone doesn't pay, you have an agreement you sign when you enter into your mortgage, whether it's when you buy or you refinance. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't pay it. Um, the bank's going to come back try to collect the debt and if they're unable to do it, it goes to sheriff sale. Um, the bank then once the sheriff sale is confirmed or the lien holder will take ownership of the property and at that point it becomes bank owned. So a lot of times you'll see in these and you know you drive around and you're looking at houses and you'll see like big stickers on windows and stuff and people will always ask well what's going on with that house? Mm -hmm. Well this process can be really drawn out. Um, it's typically for a, a two year process yes. for the bank or whoever the lien holder is to own right. the property at that point. So yes. Zillow and I don't know that truly it did, but they will always have um, these properties that look like they're in foreclosure, but they're not yet. It's yeah. like a to be announced coming, or coming yeah. soon kind of mm -hmm. thing. And there's really no information to be had at that point. Just FYI. Mm -hmm. but there are really, public records. I mean, you can, sure. if you are really into that kind of stuff, I mean, you can go on to the recorder's website or, you know, there are other sources where you can go look through the foreclosure proceedings to see you know where it right. is in that process but really what you need to know is it's not ready for you to buy yet is is i think the important thing not for sale um, not for sale so it will be and you know a lot of signs are the stickers on the windows mm -hmm. the grass is getting taller you know like those kinds of things and then eventually it will hit the market so where do you find these bank owned Properties. How if someone wants to find them, where do you find them? Well, once it's hit the market and it's ready to be sold, chances are they're going to be working with an agent that's going to go to the MLS because yes. that's going to get the maximum exposure. Right? Yes. So yes, it, it, most if not all foreclosure listings, um, once that process is completed, they will be listed in your local MLS. So your agent that you're working with. You know, if you're looking solely for distressed properties, you know, and we'll, I'm going to use that term regularly today. So, um, but if you're looking for that kind of thing, talk to your agent about setting up a search for you. Now, as was discussed early in this, you know, five years ago when the market or more, you know, after the market collapsed, I mean, foreclosures and distress sales were readily available, and it steeply discounted mm -hmm. prices in some cases. So what we're finding now though is the number of foreclosed homes is we're in such a strong seller's market has gone down dramatically. And I think banks are starting to wise up mm -hmm. um, that the market, and I actually, I showed one 
not this weekend, but the weekend before, it had been remodeled. Uh, um, they yeah. actually went in, put new carpet in, new uh, sure. cabinets, new countertops, new appliances except the refrigerator. So I think the banks are getting wise in that they know an investor might buy it for $20,000 less and if they just sink a little bit of money in it, they could probably reap that reward as opposed to selling to somebody That's else. That's interesting. So, in my experience, I have only been in one home that a foreclosed home, distressed property, whatever you want to call it today, um, that was market ready. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, a lot of times you'll go in, the power won't be on. You know, if you're looking in the winter, it's going to be cold. The smoke alarms are going to be beeping because no one's replaced the battery. Hopefully it's winterized. Um, yeah. yeah. And usually, I mean, very often and most times they have winterized those properties because they don't want to deal with busted pipes and, you know, water problems. And, so, And, you know, along those lines, one thing to keep in mind before you walk into these properties is you don't know what you're going to walk into. So it could be market ready, it could have been winterized, or the previous owners could have gone through and destroyed the property. I mean, so, I mean you'll see the pictures. Yeah, but I think that's yeah, you, probably there's a, wide range. a good place to start here. I know this is a really broad topic today. And you know, anyone, if you've got questions, please, because I know there's always questions with this stuff. So, you know, private message, message now, don't call, text, whatever. But, um, you know, usually when that first conversation happens. I always like people to be fully aware of what it is that they should be expecting right. with this. And so, and I, I don't know, how do you guys approach that? Because I will say, you know, it's going to be as is. Meaning, yes. you are getting the house as is. You can certainly do an inspection and dependent on, you know, things that you signed and, and agreements and, you know, in this industry, everything is pending. You know, there's typical scenarios, mm -hmm. which we cover now, but there's always going to be something that is out okay. of the ordinary. But typically, you can have an inspection done, and if you're not satisfied with the condition of the property, you know, then cross those bridges yeah. as they come. Meaning, um, you know, so there, there's going to be the bank-owned homes, foreclosed homes, and then there's HUD homes, which are the same in that they're so both bank-owned. But one is the government-based loan, so it's going to be FHA or VA, which is the HUD home, and then you have the foreclosed home. So the one thing I do like about HUD homes is that you kind of get an inspection done. They will somewhat tell you if... They've already pre-done an inspection. Right, right. That's so you have a really a better basis of knowledge of what's going on. So maybe sometimes the HVAC system isn't functioning. Maybe electric isn't functioning. Maybe the water system, there's a plumbing issue. Um, there might be mold. So, you know, they give you at least a little bit back of background on what to expect. So, you know, still have your inspection done, but you may have a little bit more knowledge of what right. you might need. Whereas with a foreclosed home, just a regular bank owned property, you won't have that. So it's kind of, you know, important to know that these properties are being sold as is. So you get what you get and you're not really in a position to negotiate with the banks or whoever the seller might be at that point for, um, Repair. They will not repair. No. They won't repair. <laughs> that just will not happen. So don't go in with the expectation. Having all of this been said, yes. so when you write your standard, your realtor writes your standard real estate purchase agreement um, and submits it to the bank for their consideration. When the bank gets that and say they um, want to accept your offer, at that point they're going to send you their own addenda. So they're going to send you um, a, a pretty long document and the things in that document are going to supersede what is in your existing purchase contract. It is very, 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 and I can't stress it enough, important very. Yes, that you read <laughs> that and you read it carefully because there are instances where you will not get it and in, you, know, you can do an inspection but you're doing it for your own information and there are yeah. some instances where you can't even terminate the contract. You have to do all inspections prior to entering into an agreement. And usually that is spelled out in your listing agreement. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to see a lot more, um, some of these auction sites um, popping up. Mm -hmm. One of them, for instance, is hubzoo.com. Oh, yeah. A lot of yeah. um, banks are now listing mm -hmm. with um, agents on hubzoo.com. Uh, it's hubzu.com if you're curious to go um, see what I'm talking about. Um, but they're they're live online auctions. You know, mm -hmm. you enter your 
your agent enters your bid for you. Um, there's a period of time. Now don't do, you can't do like eBay and enter your bid five minutes before um, <laughs> that it expires. You can, but can. What, what's gonna, <laughs> what it does is it extends the bidding period for a period of time following the last bid within that bid period. So on eBay, of course, you can go in and you wait till there's five seconds, you place your bid and hopefully you're the winning bidder. Mm -hmm. On HubZoo, if you do that, then it extends it an additional period of time. And then until that additional period of time passes with no bids, that's when a winner um, is determined. Mm -hmm. So don't expect to go enter at the last minute. Having that been said, HubZoo in particular, I've noticed um, the ones listed on there, a lot of them are, you know, inspections first. You know, mm -hmm. you go in, you do any inspection prior to submitting your bid. Mm -hmm. So the, I guess the moral of all of this story is understand and have a very good, you know, in-depth conversation with your agent before you submit your bid about what is the status of what you're bidding on mm -hmm. and what are your potential contingencies. Right. No, and none of them will accept a home sale contingency. So if right. you're planning to move into the foreclosed home and you have to sell your other home first, um, that cannot be, I mean, it can happen, but you just can't make a contingent. You know, right. you have to be able to yes. qualify with your existing lender for both payments um, prior to entering into a contract. So in some of these two, if you don't, follow through with the terms, you miss dates, you know, you just have to really read that addenda, the, the addendum that you get because it's going to specify. There are different bank owned. I mean, there's banks that own, you know, so you'll see a, you know, Chase or Huntington or, you know, Bank of America, whatever bank it may be, may actually be the owner. It may be Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, which is a whole nother conversation about how that happens in loans getting bought on secondary markets mm -hmm. and um, going back to that owner. Um, and each, each one is going to have their own um, form that you're going to have to sign and each one is different. So There's that's the point. So. A lot of paperwork. Yes. And not everyone's a reader of paperwork. And one of the things that we stress so often, and you know, you, you are well within your rights to not read anything if you don't want to. But it's Not really advised. important to read what you're getting Please, into yeah. because oftentimes... And if you don't want to read it, hire an attorney that will read it for you. And, absolutely. And, absolutely. 100%. You know, one of the things that I always preface this conversation with my clients, well, maybe not preface, but anyway, at some point during the conversation we have, I always like to let them know this. these usually typically take a lot of out-of-pocket cash to get to a point where you can have them livable. Um, note, it is a two-year process. Sometimes those homes are vacant for two years. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they people vacate right, you know, and things happen at the last years. minute. Right. But yeah, the, those pipes can freeze. I've been in homes where it is only the studs on the wall. Like the, the, it's just studded. You'll there's see a no lot of times in the basement, on. like because the basement ends up getting water and if the drywall gets by and they will come cut the drywall out yeah to, to where keep the water, it where it won't mold and right. the mold grow mm -hmm. further up into the home oftentimes but. mold oftentimes i mean you know it's just you don't know so and when you're bidding on those auction sites or any of these they require earnest money and they will require some out-of-pocket fees to be paid so you do need to have a little bit of cash flow there mm -hmm. so hub zoo for instance um, a, since we brought that up yeah they charge a buyer's premium and i, I want to say the buyer's premium is like yeah it's it? one percent or something of the premium. yeah and don't quote me on that go on hub zoo to look it up and it's going to depend on the listing mm -hmm. but you know um but there is, you know, there's, a, there's a, you'll find on the online auctions, you know, outside of even that website, there's a technology fee, mm -hmm. there's, you know, um, closing fee. You can choose to work with your own title company, but if you use your own title company, then they're going to charge you uh, for your own type, your own owner's insurance mm -hmm. policy, which mm -hmm. is usually paid by the seller. You can use their title company, and I think that's an acceptable thing to right. do. Um, I don't know why you would use your own in that instance if you're going to have to pay more money. Mm -hmm. But in any case, um, just understand the, the whole point being understand, you know, what you're getting into. And on the note of buying, you know, as is, you know, assuming that you enter into a contract where you're still allowed the inspection and that is a contingency, 
if you get into it and your inspection, you find, whoa, you know, this is, it has to be material defects. But if you get into it and you determine, okay, this is way more than I thought I was getting myself into, mm -hmm. you would still have, um, a, if, if it's allowed, but then what you've signed, have the right to get out of it. Mm -hmm. um, now, you are not going to get back, you know, any inspection fee that you paid, right. and, you know, and any out-of-pocket costs that came up front. Really, at that point, it's probably just your inspection. But in any case, you can still get out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, and none of this is intended to scare you. No. I mean, there there no. are education. There are opportunities out there, and there are absolutely there you know, are. And your agent, you know, who knows the market, can you know, if you're whether you're looking for something to live in or as an investment, can really point you, you know, to those kinds of opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, and. Um, you know, we've all, you know, we've, we've been through this process, um, so, so we get it. Um, um, and some of the other things is, you know, don't, um, don't miss dates. <laughs> dates are very important. One of, the, <laughs> one, of, one of the easiest ways to lose your earnest deposit is to miss a date in a bank owned contract. Mm -hmm. So, well, in, yeah, in contracts, so... When you're, how would you, is there a difference, would you say, between working with what would be the normal seller transaction or a bank loan transaction? I mean, so what are you talking about with dates? You know, I, so I, I, know. I think. I um, know, but I'm just I, saying for I you mean, guys. <laughs> in, in, in a person-to-person -person transaction, the other side may be more willing to give and be a little more flexible. You know, you're like, more forgiving. More forgiving. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is they so all. So when you say miss a date, what does that mean? So if the inspection period, for example, if we're dealing with a property where you can have an inspection, mm -hmm. especially in a person to person transaction, you're like, you know what, I couldn't get my inspector in in time, can we have three more days to do right. the inspection? A seller may be like, you know what, I understand that. Yeah. I've had that same problem before, that's fine. In this situation, I'm like, no, a date is a date is a date. A Too date bad. is you firm. Missed you missed it, thanks, mm -hmm. we're going to keep your earnest money yeah. and we're going to move on to the yeah. next person. And one of the biggest things I've found, especially with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac um, contracts, and those two are distinctly different. So dates start with different um, triggers mm -hmm. in Fannie Mae and a Freddie Mae contract, or at least the last time, and maybe it's changed. But in one, the timing starts when you receive their signatures on paperwork. So you sign all your addenda, your original contract, you send it to um, the asset manager, and then they send you back signatures. Mm -hmm. And your timing starts when they deliver those signatures to you. And the other one, the dates start with when you are notified you are the winning bidder. Mm -hmm. So two distinct differences, because it can take a week to get signatures mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if it starts with when you get the signatures, then your inspection period, if it was 10 days, starts when you get those signatures. If it's the other way, and it's when you're acknowledged that you're the winning bidder, then it starts, now. Then it starts that minute yeah. and that, that day. So two distinct time frames. So it's very easy to miss an inspection. To, mm -hmm. to TJ's point, you know, not only is hiring the inspector and getting them in there within the allowed time period, but if you misread the or misinterpret the contract and you miss that date, the bank is not forgiving. Right. They will not forgive. And they will take your deposit. So in a seller, traditional seller transaction, there may be emotion in it. You know, right. they, you know, have a house that they care about and they, you know, want to go through with the <coughs> transaction like it is. The bank does not care. Yeah. It is all financial. They will take your earnest money and they will relist the home or you will just forgive your inspection. No, they won't relist. They will just, you will not have an inspection contingency any longer. So that that is a very important <coughs> um, and on the dates topic, you know, HUD homes are different in that, that there are a lot more dates that need to be met. It's oftentimes you get, you, there are signatures and they, ever hear the term what signature? You know, yeah. you have to have, and what that means is hand signed. We do a lot of online e-signature nowadays. Um, you get, a, a, you know, an email sent to you, click here, you click here, boom, your signature's there. Mm -hmm. With HUD homes, you have to have a handwritten signature, ink signatures ink, overnight. blue ink, as a matter of fact, keep yeah. them black. So, yeah. um, 
You'll hear wet signatures, signatures and wet mm -hmm. signatures means mm -hmm. You write it with the pen. Right. So know, those dates have to be met as well. So there's just a lot of pressure I well, think, and, as far as... And you, you know, I have a client, for instance, I was in Las Vegas uh -huh. on vacation and a client decided while I was on vacation that he was, he wanted to offer on a HUD home. So we had entered, so the way, okay, this is a good segue into HUD. HUD. So, so we're going to go from bank owned to HUD and while the process of getting there is the same. They are two distinctly different um, processes. processes. So HUD home, let, let's start with the beginning. Yeah. So, you know, so you have to, for a HUD home, first HUD homes are also listed in the MLS. So mm -hmm. you can go on the MLS, your agent can set up, you know, search and it includes HUD owned properties. The difference is the ultimate resource for HUD is HUDHomestore.com. So, you know, um, if, for instance, a property gets, goes in contract and, and the MLS is still reflected as active, you know, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. um, you still need to check the HUD Home Store to see if it's still listed on HUD Home Store. If it's on HUD Home Store, the property is still available. Mm -hmm. If it is not on Home HUD Store, HUD then Home, whatever I just said. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> Especially so, after some wine. <laughs> I know, right? So, but, you know, so rely on HUDHomestore.com as the, the primary resource. That would be the be all and all. And that is where Jenny had mentioned, you know, there's inspections that were already done. Yes. So that is where you can go find the inspection reports. You can find out the status of the property or you can find out what bid period it is. Is it's in. So let's talk about bid yeah. periods for just a second. Yeah. So why don't you, Jenny, why don't you lead off with you know where we start sure. in this bid process. So with a HUD home, you have a certain amount of days and time that you're allowed to put your bid in. Um, it has to be a real estate agent or broker that enters your bid for you. You have to um, have so you can't just do it on your own if you are a buyer. Yes. Um, you do need to have someone representing you for that. And it has to be a broker that's registered with HUD. So right. not all brokers are registered with HUD. So if you want a HUD home, make sure the broker, you know, that your agent is yeah. affiliated and, with well, HUD. And our broker is registered with we HUD. We are. Sorry. <laughs> well, no problem. Right here. Right here. Right here. Um, and I think that's important to note. The, these properties are not, in, uh, you know, it's not the typical, it's not the norm. You really do need to be working with an agent that has some experience in it, or at least with has HUD someone, in particular, yeah, yeah, especially with HUD, or at least has some experience or someone they can rely on to ask questions. Yes. Um, like a broker. Like their broker is who they oh, should be asking so. questions of. But um, anyway, so you have a specific time period that this bid can be placed. So you can't really like, um, say, oh, I saw this house, I want to put an offer in on it, can we do it in three weeks from now? Maybe, but likely not. It's probably at a point where there's 12 hours left right. to put that bid in. And so you only have until that time. So or, or on that same, same vein, I saw this house, I really like it, I want to submit an offer, but I only want to give them six hours to decide. No. Yeah. If no, the bids are open for another day, they're open for another day. And or, most importantly, you have no idea how many people have bid or right. what the bid. bids are at. So don't ask because yeah. we don't know. Mm -hmm. And there's no way to find out. And this is, this is true with bank owned and HUD. Right. You know, so you, I mean, as far as submitting your offer, you know, the bank, um, all of these, you know, a seller, you know, for instance, I have a seller right now and the seller said to me, I'm not necessarily interested in the highest offer. I'm interested in the strongest offer. And what he meant by that was how well qualified the buyer is, you know, if they're paying cash versus um, financing, um, just all terms within the contract. Mm -hmm. At the bottom line for the bank is the dollar. Mm -hmm. And that is what is gonna decide whether or not they take, you know, I get people who have said to me, well, I'm submitting cash. The bank doesn't care. Yeah. It's all cash yeah. to the bank yeah. at closing. At closing, so, it's all cash. Um, so it's, it's the bottom line. So that is true with foreclosures, yes. HUD, whatever yeah, type of distress, distress sale. Yeah. I think generally. so. And just, you know, you think, oh, well, it's a HUD home, it's bank owned. I, I want to come in 30 below. 30 grand below with the list prices. Well, sometimes that'll work, sometimes it won't. It depends It worked a lot um, that, several years ago. Yeah, now, not now, so much. Um, um, you can submit and we will, you know, if you tell us you want 30 grand below, 
you know, for a hundred thousand dollar house, you know, thirty percent below. Happy I mean, to do it for you. That's we are you obligated to submit what you want to submit. Now and we may advise they go against over it too. Um, I mean, yeah. there's that you know, dependent on area, dependent on the house, dependent right. on the price. Sometimes you will get, off, you know, right. it's going to close above. In, and these bids may be restricted to a specific type of buyer. Yes. So that is the important on property. property. Mm -hmm. So first is the restricted. The first thing that happens with a HUD home is it is in what is called the restricted period. And the restricted period is limited to only owner occupants. So someone who's going to buy the house and actually live in it and nonprofit organizations. So during that restricted period, which I think is up to 30 days, mm -hmm. um, or maybe it's only 15 days, but in any case, that is only people that can bid during a restricted period. Now, the import, I've had people ask, ask me as well, well, you know, well, how are they gonna know? I'm gonna bid anyways, and I'm gonna buy this investment. Well, let me tell you, you're buying, <laughs> you're buying a property owned by the federal government, okay? They know. And you are buying, <laughs> when you see <laughs> well, they, they do. do. <laughs> Brothers watching. They're watching. Uh, watching watch the news. <laughs> so, but in any case, they you sign something under the penalty of perjury, which is a you know a major kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. <laughs> you know that you are buying it and you're going to live in it. And if you are found to not be doing that, then you're going to face federal penalties. And I you know I think it, the fine starts. At significant amounts of money and even potentially jail time. So just probably don't want to. Go so there. just don't, don't do it. Um, yeah. It's not worth it. There's nothing in the world worth it. I don't care what the price of the home is or how good of a deal you think you're getting. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, and we won't do it. If we know you're not living there, I will not submit. If I right. know you're not an owner occupant, yeah. I will not submit for you. So just no. After the restricted period ends, it will open to investors and all other buyers right. pretty much at that point. So, you know, at that point, anybody is welcome to bid on the home. HUD, like Jenny and I think TJ mentioned, is part of the government. And the government is interested in building home ownership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I think everybody has a vested interest in the economy and the economy does well and great if investors can help the economy. But the government really is trying to serve owner occupants and homeowners mm -hmm. first. So make sure that, you know, that's when your bidding is, and then you get that advantage if you're an owner occupant to bid during that restricted period. And in, in that same vein though, they want to build stable homeownership. So if you're going to be an owner occupant and you've done this same thing in the last, in less than 24 months, you're probably going to be restricted from bidding on that property. No, you're not probably, you will not be able to buy, if you bid. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I mean, I provided, yeah. Wait, during the restricted period, after the restricted period. So, but if you buy a home as an owner occupant during any period, whether it's restricted or not, you know, past the restricted period, and I forget what the term they give it. Um, if you're an owner occupant, you cannot buy another HUD home within 24 months. HUD or what about the bank owned? No, bank owned, you can, you can buy whatever you want in bank owned. Okay, so. Now, bank owned has, we'll talk about need restrictions with bank owned in just a second. Remind me about that. Okay. But. So HUD will restrict you. If you own a HUD owned home within 24 months, you cannot buy another one. And you are an owner occupant. So you buy a HUD home, you live, now you certify when you are the winning bidder for HUD that you will live there for 12 months. Mm -hmm. So you must certify when you buy a HUD home that you will live there for 12 months. After 12 months, you're free to sell it, you know, um, do whatever you wish at that point. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to have to wait another 12 months before you could buy it. So you can't sell after a year and then just go straight into another HUD home. You're going to, if you're going to buy, you're going to have to buy something else. Mm -hmm. um, and then after 24 months, then you're free to buy another HUD home um, at that point. So just okay. understand the timelines that, you know, owner occupant must live there 12 months, can't buy another one. And wait, on those conditions, I can't remember the timing. Provided the home isn't able to be occupied because of certain issues based on the quality of the home, you still only have so many days to move into the home after closing. Is, well, isn't it, uh, I can't remember what those days are, do you remember? Uh, I don't know about that. So, there, so let, that, that segues into a good, um, uh, another part of FHA homes. There's two, two types of FHA properties. There's FHA insured and there's FHA 
uninsured. Mm. So when you yes. are looking on HUDHomestore.com, uh, and especially if you're an FHA buyer, you need to pay attention to what the um, classification two, two is. Yeah. Because if it's FHA insured, that means you can purchase with your traditional FHA loan um, that you probably pre-qualified with mm -hmm. you know, when you started the process. If it is FHA uninsured, that means you must purchase with what's called a 203K loan. The 203K loan is a um, FHA product a loan product that allows you to finance repairs in the same loan for the property you're purchasing. So say for instance, FHA won't allow you to occupy or purchase a property with an FHA loan if the um, furnace isn't working. You know, If you don't have a working furnace, hot water tank, you're not going to be able to occupy the property. Again, we go back to when you start in this transaction, you're buying as is. They're not going to fix a thing before closing and right. you will not be allowed to fix anything prior to closing. So that means if the furnace is inoperable with in the case mm -hmm. of HUD homes, you will have that pre-inspection um, listed and it will tell you the furnace is not functioning. So you will not be able to close the standard FHA loan because of that. And you won't be able to get homeowners insurance, which is another whole other issue. So in a, in other a case, today. <laughs> so there really is, and this is probably uh, going to be a longer one. And I'm sorry for that, but it is, I think, all good information. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. Um, in any case, so for the FHA uninsured, which could be a property that has a non-working furnace or has other structural issues, like an engineer has said it needs um, steel support beams. Which isn't always the end of the world. I mean, you no, can, no, you, it's not. It, and it doesn't mean it's not an inhabitable house. It just means they're not going to give you a loan until those beams are installed, or you do an FHA, FHA 203K, which means you will have those beams done. So you assign an agreement with the bank, you hire a contractor, the work gets done, they release funds, and the 203K loan will actually give you money up front for repairs. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Ending. The house needs to appraise. Yes, for, at the post renovation. I mean, this is like again, we'll have to have a lender. We need a two hundred three k yeah loan day. Yeah, because right? this, this is a whole other thing. So we're gonna really high level this. But just note, you will have to have um, contractors come in and give you an amount of money for what repairs yes. might License, need to be done. General prior to, I mean, this is not like the bank says. Okay, have this amount of money and you have this to make the DIY it yourself. No. Yeah, you have to find out from contractors what that amount of money is to make whatever the repairs are that are needed to be made. DIY away with paint and cosmetics. Not happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, but right. Things that are going to re require permits. And especially if the bank is financing them. Yeah. Um, and then. And, and they then, will inspect. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so with all that being said, once you find out that amount, the house then needs to be able to appraise. At the home, at the price you're selling it, that you're purchasing it for, plus those escrowed amounts yes. of repair. So, so what the bank? No, what the okay. bank? To that point, the bank will say there is a pre-renovation and a post-renovation value. So you're for a two hundred three k loan, the pre-renovation value is the purchase price that you enter into in your contract. Post-renovation value is I'm going to spend ten thousand dollars to upgrade HVAC. To and you can you can do kitchen repairs like you can remodel the mm -hmm. kitchen you can do mm -hmm. those kinds of right. things. Um, so if the kitchen is a complete disaster or the previous owner you know TJ mentioned earlier or I think Jenny that they ripped that stuff out when they left just because they were mad the bank was taking it back. Mm -hmm. um, the bank will allow you to do those kinds of repairs you know if you have an estimate from a qualified licensed contractor. So you can finance all of those things and that gets you to, so say you're going to spend $10,000. Right. That is your post renovation value. And the appraiser will look at the house to verify that it can qualify at the pre renovation value. And then they will say, okay, if they make these repairs, the home is still worth the post renovation value. So Jenny makes an excellent point along those lines mm -hmm. um, that yes, pre post renovation must meet both of those values. Your down payment will be determined based upon the total amount you're borrowing. So say you were gonna, you know, FHA requires three and a half percent down. Mm -hmm. 
you're buying a hundred thousand dollar house you're putting a hundred and ten thousand dollars into it now you're gonna have to put down three and a half percent of a hundred and ten thousand and not a right. hundred thousand yeah. so i mean in that case it's not a whole lot more no but um but it, it the more be. you up that yeah. like the more the it more it gets mm -hmm. so. so again out of pocket cost yes so freddie and fanny have similar programs the main difference that you will find so we talked about um bank owned and freddie may or Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae properties. Both of those have similar programs for uh, offering a renovation loan. The big difference with a 203k loan is 203k will give you a certain percentage of that post renovation to start your work up from. And what they do is, is they start, so after you do so much work, there, there are stages. So they'll come say, okay, you did this work, I'll, we'll give you X amount of money for that work. Mm -hmm. And then you do the next level of work, then you get X amount for that until you get to that final, what you said you were going to do. And the 203K does require you build, I think, a 20% buffer into what you say that amount will be. So if you say you're gonna spend 10 grand, they're gonna add 10% to that um, mm -hmm. because you know we all know these things end up costing more than you thought right. they would. So, and, and that, it's uh -huh. almost without us. <laughs> I want to fool Don't myself. I have renovated a lot, and I have a. I have, I go in with the best of intentions that I'm not only going to get. You know, ever. sometimes that granite looks way better than the laminate. And it's not even that. <laughs> you get it behind the walls, and they're like, Whoa. oh yeah. I mean, like, it's like you know, like, it's a whole slew of stuff. Yeah. Anyway, so Freddie Mae and Fannie Mac does not give you any money up front. So there's a very different. You know, so if you don't have any cash to start your renovations, Freddie Mae, Fannie Mac. Renovation loan may not be for you because right. you've got a your first with your first um, stage of of those isn't going to be you're going to put out of your pocket. So if right. you don't have that out of pocket first stage, then Freddie Mae Fannie Mac isn't for you. FHA two hundred three k again, you will get a percentage up front that you can use for this. And there's also a two hundred three b, right? I thought that's a retirement plan. No. Maybe we're, it's we're, something we, else. We, we, maybe two or three. Are there any know. lenders out there? Yeah. We, we need to get some lenders in on these. We're going to get our lenders in. So the cool thing lines. about Facebook Live now is that if you're watching one of us, we can invite you to come in on the conversation. Mm -hmm. Now, Anybody listening to the podcast, I'm really sorry because I just <laughs> clanked my class against the microphone. And you guys, <laughs> your ears probably just exploded. Like, so. I just did it too for fun. So. But anyway. Um, so, um, I don't I, Okay, so th this is a lot of information, and please, we, we understand that, we know that. And so, we're going we're gonna to gloss over a couple other real quick things. Yes, please. With the HUD Dude, things. Yeah. So, um, or, or let's just do a little quick overview of HUD. Yes. So, HUD, you initially offer on HUDHomestore.com. Must be done with a licensed broker registered with HUD. But you can go look at that stuff. I mean, you can, right. you have access to look at the homes that are available. HUDHomestore.com, go look away. Yeah, and, and you'll see all the same stuff we see. However, to place an offer, to place a bid, you need one of us. Yes. Right. First comes owner occupants and nonprofits during the restricted period, so you can bid during those periods. If you're the winning bidder again, you certify you're gonna live in it if you're an owner occupant and can't buy again for two more years if you do occupy the property. Mm -hmm. All right. Lastly, pay, pay close attention to dates and read closely the addenda that are provided. Because, Please read. Yes. This is not the time to skip. No. No. So. Now, there's a whole, it, at this point we've gotten to, to instances where people have left the home and um, either the bank or the government owns them, but there's a whole classification of distressed properties that happen before that process. Yes. And I've worked with folks on both ends of this process, and that's the short sale. So in this instance, um, the homeowner owes more on their mortgage than what the home is worth on the open market, and the bank has agreed to consider... Mm -hmm. And consider uh, being key term. Mm -hmm. A sale price for less than what the seller owns. However, the bank is, by the way, still continuing the foreclosure process and reserves the right, right. to continue that process through the sheriff's sale and then taking it as a bank owned property. Yes. This is a little bit different beast. 
So a majorly different. Piece. Yeah, I, I I will say that I tend to shy away from the short sale. And I shy my clients away from the short sale. And sales. that's usually what I re recommend as well. Only in that, it is it 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 can take a year or more to close. Usually or that a year shuts or more people down. Get it? Like, yeah. You know, well, even worse. Like, yeah. Right. Because yeah. Because we There's, all know this is an emotional process. Right. You know, so you get yourself. We all live in our homes. These are homes, you know. Again, 43 homes, cheesy. It's not just a house, it's a it's home. It's a home. Right, it is true. Like, you know, and it's. Hashtag. Not so, hashtag. It's the motto. <laughs> <laughs> but it is true. I mean, and, you know, I just recently bought my own home. Yeah. So I was reminded of how emotional mm -hmm. the process is. Because when you walk in a home, you're picturing the things that happen in your life. You know, it's. You know, you don't buy it and you're, you know, you walk in and you're picturing where the couch goes mm -hmm. and where the TV goes, where your dining room table and, you know, oh my gosh, I can cook some amazing meals in this mm -hmm. kitchen. Um, you know, and look at that dining room table. We can have the whole t family over for the holidays. So, you know, it just instantly in your mind, you have already triggered naturally emotional responses. Mm -hmm. And if you are an overly emotional person and listen closely if you are an overly emotional person a short sale is not no. for you because um depending upon where it is in this process mm -hmm. like jenny said this can take a year um mm -hmm. and at the end of the year and you've been planning those those um holiday meals all this time mm -hmm. and at the end of the year the bank just decides, well, we're just going to go forward with the foreclosure process. So it's kind of like this. If you have a lease up in June. Timing, yes. Don't do a short sale. No, you cannot time this. Because like, it's, it's April now. Yeah. <laughs> so, or if you, you know, it's not for the faint of heart, quite frankly. There, uh, it, it is, it is, mm -hmm. it is gambling. I'm going through one right now, I mean, and we've, you know, we're hopefully set to close, knock on fake wood um you know we're gonna oh sorry again to the podcast um <laughs> so but you know we're supposed to close here in less than you know eight days um and you know there are still some things you know up in the air so um it just okay so let's talk about why why you know we'll, let's get into the substance of you know this issue first of all the bank is taking less money than they're owed and think about that reverse the scenario mm -hmm. i owe you $300,000 because I borrowed my money from you to buy a house. Um, okay. And for so whatever now, reason, you're in some sort of financial distress, yes. be it divorce, so be it job loss, be it just um, pay cut. I don't you, know. Yeah, something happened. You can't pay Medical the Medical expenses. You can't pay the mortgage. You, know, you can't pay, you can't pay the, the mortgage anymore. Very, right. very, very yeah. excellent point. Um, so at that point... Um, you're getting those letters. I can't pay you back. I, and, I, and now I can't pay you back. Right. So the options are, okay, the bank's gonna go through the foreclosure process. Now, to qualify for a short sale, you must be able to pr prove some sort of hardship. You know, uh, in the instance, in the um, one that I'm doing right now, um, one of the two people who own the house died. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know more of a hardship that you, you could prove. Right. So now there were, there were two incomes paying for the house, one of the people dies, um, now that changes, right? I mean, there's less income mm -hmm. to be able to pay. So they proved the hardship. So we've pretty much got the short sale part of this approved. Um, so, but you have to prove that hardship as the seller. So when you're the buyer, you're at the mercy of the seller proving all of these things and following up and sending all the documents because they are going to have to send so much stuff to the bank. I mean, they're going to have to, I mean, to the extent of proving that the other person died, they probably got to, I mean, I don't even know, no, but they probably yeah. had to send a death certificate to actually prove they died. Like, you know, I, I don't know, that, that may be overstating, but in any okay. case, um, there's a lot the seller is going to have to mm -hmm. do, and they've got a long process to get through. And as the buyer, they don't, so the seller can prove their hardship and they can start this process when they know they're, they're in trouble. Um, so like when that person dies and they know this is, or you know, they get divorced and they know there's gonna be an issue, they can start the short sale process and start sending those documents to the bank, the bank to get short sale mm -hmm. approval. The bank, however, is not gonna take this seriously 
until they receive an offer on the property. So the offer, the property must be listed in the MLS mm -hmm. by an agent, and you must get an offer to really even start this ball rolling. Because at that point, the bank is going to look at the hardship waivers and all the stuff the seller has submitted. They're going to look at the purchase agreement. They're going to look at how much is owed and whether or not it's acceptable to them that, you know, how far apart they are from what they will take versus the offer that they get. Now, they can counter your offer. They can do, they can reject your offer. Or they can just say, we're not going through with the short sale because we don't think you have a hardship. Um, but all of this takes time, you know, and, mm -hmm. and you're sitting on the other end after you submit your offer waiting on it. So. You know, I think we've, we've said this a million times that we try to advise our clients that at the end of the day, this is a business transaction. Mm -hmm. And I think the short sale and these other ones that we've talked about today are the ultimate yeah. business transaction yeah. Yeah. because you're dealing with an entity. Mm -hmm. And your seller will sign. So your seller, if they get an offer, um, you know, they're going to sign the best offer that they get. And then that will go to the bank. But the, the, the caveat is all of this is contingent upon the lien holder approval, which, you know, is getting to, T, to TJ's, you know, point here, I think mm -hmm. so. So, and, and it's hard, right? Because in most buying and selling instances, you're dealing with a person and you understand that you both have emotions tied to it. And in this, none of these entities that we've talked about are in any hurry. They're looking at their bottom line and they're looking at their dollar. And that's really all they care about, quite frankly. Yeah. I mean, they don't mm -hmm. care about you. They don't care about the seller. They, mm -hmm. they don't. They don't care about that that note that you sent, or you yeah. know, the fact that oh, you know, my grandparents grew up in this home, and we really want this home back in the family. They don't care about any of that. And they selling can be emotional too, but for these guys, or you know, or gals, or whoever it is, you know, that are sitting states away, that are the actual owner, they know nothing about the property. They know nothing about you. No. And you know, as your agents, we care. You know, deeply. Absolutely. Like I get is, you know, Absolutely. I see your emotions and I see mm -hmm. everything that you're going through, you know, and it, it weighs on us, you know, as agents when it doesn't go your way. Um, so know that we care and know that we are putting our energy and efforts to make it go right, but um, or to get you what you want. Um, but so not for the faint of heart. Yeah, and and, and no, this is an important, I think, note too for all of what we've talked about. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I've been through several of these, mm -hmm. um, and in the end, most of them have worked out. There have been a few yes. that, that yeah. have not. Um, having that been said, know that you're, you know, and I get calls from the, can you just call and check and see, you know, can you see where it, okay. Yes. <laughs> um, yes and no. Uh, so, you know, know that, um, on the other end of this is a lot of times a major corporation that has right. tens of thousands of employees and has thousands of these same situations going on. And it's not that we don't want to call right. and it's not that we don't want to know what's going on. It's that we are truly have no control over the situation. Once it gets to a certain point, the control is out of anyone's hands right. remotely close to the transaction. Mm -hmm. And it's a waiting game for us any one of us and it's a waiting game for you and we want it to be over as much as you I'm um, probably not as much but you know we want it to work out for you you know um, but we have no control um, and you know I've had clients that I think thinks I can do something to control the situation and as much look I'm as big a control fee <laughs> as, as you're gonna find and I want control, believe me. If I could drive and stand in front of their desk and find out what was going on, I would do we it. We would do it. Um, yeah. But it's just not feasible. Um, no, so, I think all that being said, there are situations like we talked about at the very beginning where any of these distressed properties are right for the right buyer. And j just like any, yeah. that is um, the most important point I think you know, for all of us. Like, yeah, and I think if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're willing to take the risk, if you're willing to recognize that this is the ultimate home buying business transaction, and if you're willing to be diligent mm -hmm. and consistent, you, yes. then this can be the right product for you with the added condition that you are not on a tight timeline. Bring it in.
Boom. Blow. <laughs> Boom. CJ just preached. Mike. <laughs> and if I could lift that mic and drop it without so breaking it. So drop it. But that is not a cheap <laughs> mic, so we are not going to drop it. <laughs> I'm going to be the Verizon guy. <laughs> One more. <laughs> Just kidding. No. So no. But I, there's I really, a lot here today. I, mean, I think. I mean, you summed it up. I mean, that. That I was can't amazing, even, TJ. Yeah, thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Um, He's amazing. And me, it's, it's not even the wine. That like that was good. So, um, <laughs> so but it was a lot, was and I really think we could dive into a lot of these individual yeah, topics. Yeah. Um, but, but 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 if you have questions on any of these specific yes. topics. Message us, ask us questions, get Wins entered into cookies. the drawing for these delicious next cookies next month's box. Or one. It, it's, it's a different and box. One. It's not going to be the same box. They'll be fresh, we promise. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Jenny will probably have long eaten those cookies if they make it to her house. Don't tell her. Not this school. Jenny. No. Jenny oh. Murray. Jenny, oh, Jenny oh, Murray. Sugar's <laughs> not on the plan, Wayne. <laughs> and you know what? The whole time the topic's been the same because I can't read it on this side. So sorry if you're trying to follow along. Um, oh, on the. Yeah, on the I was screen. wondering about that. I've looked at that a few times. Thinking, <laughs> I, I yeah, can't, I can't see it, see it so. and you probably can't see it either. So we had bad lighting today, so we'll do better next week. So podcast. We'll be available forty three homes dot com. You can mm -hmm. listen. You know, we're trying to figure oh, this whole Apple thing out. Well. Yeah, yeah, they won't hear that. So we're trying to figure out how to get these things um, in a more accessible way. Um, but I know a couple of you have listened, so we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. so. And we are real estate agents, so we are happy to help you in any purchase, sale, what, answer yes. questions, mm -hmm. whatever real estate agent or questions you have, needs, we're here and Hub, available. Bank owned, traditional sale. Yeah, because there's a lot. I think there's a lot and, and mm -hmm. TV shows tend to, um, you know, it's 30 minutes and obviously we've talked for a very long time today and really not even, even touch the is, topic. Yeah. Well, I can tell it you. It is 401. Oh, what's well, an hour? An hour. That's, a, that's, a good, that's, that's the a good longest hour. one yet. But anyway, <laughs> so with all that being said, we appreciate everybody watching. And any questions you have, again, private message, email, uh, Just call, leave it in the comments if you want or to. Or comment. So, yes. Here. If yeah. you'd rather more private, then the other options are available. Yeah. So with that, we'll, we've gone long enough. We thank you so much. Until next Cheers, week. Everyone. Cheers. Three o'clock next week. We actually had our topic and we have it scheduled, but I don't remember what it is. So tune in next uh, week. It'll be a mystery. We'll, we'll post it somewhere. <laughs> we'll, we'll post it. Thanks, right. guys. See Thanks, ya. guys. Thank you.